Ezekiel was one of the prophets of the Old Testament, and the book of Ezekiel talks about flying chariots of fire. Is this misinterpreted ancient alien technology? It says, I looked and saw a whirlwind coming from the north, a great cloud with fire flashing back and forth and brilliant light all around it. In the center of the fire was a glow like amber, and within it was a form of four living creatures, and it was their appearance. They had a human form. One of the most fascinating accounts of ancient flying machines can be found in the very unexpected place, the Bible. In addition to descriptions of what many believe are details of flying machines, we find a number of odd details about misinterpreted technology that existed on Earth thousands of years ago. Some of us have heard about the Emerald Tablets written by Thoth the Atlantean. And we know that the Atlanteans' pre-flood civilization, those people used to live thousands of years, tens of thousands of years. And you'll find the playlist of the Emerald Tablets in my playlist of videos. Very interesting what he says there concerning their longevity, their very advanced technology. They had flights, they had space travel, they had intergalactic travel. They even had interdimensional travel. In other words, from one dimension to the other. And because of the fact that they're, they misused their technology, he says it was a matter of time before divine justice was brought down on them, and it was. But anyway, uh, some of these Atlanteans escaped and went to other continents, to various continents of the earth, and rebuilt cities. The first thing they did was build pyramids, and he claims that his spaceship is hidden under a sphinx in a plateau of pyramids in Egypt. Now, we don't know whether it's the Giza Plateau, which he's credited with building, or if it's another plateau of pyramids in Egypt. But um, it's very interesting if you want to see what is in those emerald tablets. I have a playlist for you uh, to listen to, because it's very uh, enlightening as to what was going on. Now, in the book of Ezekiel, the prophet describes a flying chariot that is supposedly composed of wheels within wheels, and was powered by no one other than angels. The uh, ancient astronaut theory presupposes that this reference is clear evidence of ancient flying machines. Um, on the other hand, skeptics and Bible scholars argue that the book of Ezekiel does not describe literal flying machines, but suggests Ezekiel was speaking symbolically about powerful enemies that Israel was facing. But descriptions of flying chariots can be found in a number of other cultures around the globe. The ancient Hindu culture, for example, and not only that, the North American Indians also have images of them and uh, legends of them, and also the Anu. The Anu were the friends. Um, they were very wise and left them with um, a, a law of life. And um, when they left them, they, they, the Native American Indians felt as if they were abandoned by a loving uh, uh, friend. But anyway, going back to this, this raises a number of questions. Is it possible that the book of Ezekiel describes mythological enemies? Or is it possible, as some authors suggest, that the book of Ezekiel offers the ultimate evidence of ancient alien visitation and evidence of the existence of flying machines thousands of years ago? Ancient astronauts, astronauts and Ezekiel. Ezekiel is considered the 6th century BC author of the book of Ezekiel that reveals prophecies about the destruction of Jerusalem and the restoration to the land of Israel and what some refer to as the millennial temple visions of, or the third temple. Now Ezekiel happens to be one of the protagonists in the book of Ezekiel and in the Hebrew Bible. Ezekiel also is a protagonist in Judaism and also in other Abrahamic uh, biblical texts. History suggests that Ezekiel arrived at Babylon in the first captivity of Israel and is mentioned in a number of ancient texts as a great prophet. The name Ezekiel means God strengthens. One of the key parts of the book of Ezekiel and one of the main reasons why we take into consideration what is written in the book is the fact that the book of Ezekiel was written in the first person. I saw this, I observed that, I went there. Now the book describes something observed in the first person unlike many other biblical texts that are written in the third person. One of the key parts of the book of Ezekiel is when Ezekiel mentioned witnessing a wheeled chariot come from the heaven towards him. Inside this wheeled chariot were beings 
with the likeness of man, quote unquote. The book of Ezekiel makes reference of a chariot, a flying vehicle, without clear means of propulsion, although it was powered by divine energy, celestial energy. The energy that moved, an energy that had sound, those descriptions are interpreted by many people as technology, modern technology, but it was modern technology that was misinterpreted by people in the past. So if we read the book of Ezekiel specifically, where the chariot of fire is mentioned, we will notice it similarly, its similarity to the landing and takeoff of a modern spacecraft. There's a windstorm, there are flashes of lightning, there are clouds, lights, and altogether it's a magnificent spectacle, especially for someone who lived 2,000 years ago. Furthermore, Ezekiel even describes the composition of the chariot that came down from the heavens as appearing to be made out of glowing metal. The book of Ezekiel, Chariots of Fire and Spaceships, and here's what Ezekiel wrote. At uh, verse 4, I looked and saw a whirlwind coming from the north, a great cloud with fire flashing back and forth as brilliant light all around this, and in the center of the fire was a glow like amber. And within it was the form of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had a human form, but each had four faces and four wings. Their legs were straight, and their soles of their feet were like the hooves of a calf, gleaming like polished bronze. Under their wings, on their four sides, they had human hands. All four of them had faces and wings, and their wings were touching one another. They did not turn as they moved. Each one went straight ahead. The form of their faces was that of a man, and each of the four had the face of a lion on the, si on the right side, the face of an ox on the left, and also the face of an eagle. Such were their faces. Their wings were spread towards upwards. Each had two wings touching the wings of the creature on either side, and two wings covering its body. Each creature went straight ahead, wherever the spirit would go, they would go without turning as they moved. In the midst of the living creatures was the appearance of glowing of coals of fire or of torches, fire moving back and forth between the living creatures. It was bright and lightning flashed out of it. The creatures were darting back and forth as quickly as flashes of lightning. And despite the fact that Ezekiel does his best effort to describe what he witnessed coming from uh, heaven, down from heaven, most of the accounts portrayed in the uh, Bible artwork leave out key details of Ezekiel's flying chariot, the fire, the lightning, and the omnidirectional wheels. Furthermore, in the book of Ezekiel, we find a crystal clear description of the mysterious, powerful flying device. When I looked at the living creatures, he said, I saw a wheel on the ground beside each creature with its four faces. The workmanship of the wheels looked like the gleam of beryl, and all four had the same likeness. Their workmanship looked like a wheel within a wheel. As they moved, they went in any of the four directions without pivoting as they moved. Their rims, they were high and awesome, and all four rims were full of eyes all around. So as the living creatures moved, the wheels moved beside them, and when the creatures rose from the ground, the wheels also rose. Whenever the, wherever the spirit would go, they would go, and the wheels would rise alongside them, because the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When the creatures moved, the wheels moved, when the creatures stood still, the wheels stood still. And when the creatures rose from the ground, the wheels rose along them because the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Spread out above the heads of the living creatures was a shape on, in, on an awesome expanse, gleaming like crystal. So as you can see, Ezekiel describes in his book something fascinating coming down from heaven, making the earth tremble. It was something unlike anything he had seen before. It was powerful, it was glowing, from it came beings that resembled humans but were altogether different. In the 1970s, a NASA scientist called Joseph Bloomrich described he wanted to disprove the idea that Ezekiel witnessed a spaceship coming down from heaven. Bloomrich was a top-notch NASA scientist who worked on the Moon Project, and he was a rocket engineer. From that standpoint, he decided to see what was written down by Ezekiel in the first part of the book of Ezekiel. Despite his skepticism, and after months of tedious research and reading, Bloomrich eventually concluded that what Ezekiel described in his eyewitness report was indeed a type of spacecraft. This conclusion led Bloomrich to write a book titled The Spaceships of Ezekiel. 
So what did Ezekiel witness, if he witnessed anything at all? Could he have really witnessed a flying chariot and angels resembling human beings? Or is it possible, as some like to suggest, that Ezekiel had witnessed, like many before and after him, physical evidence of extraterrestrial beings? This is on Humans Are Free by Janice Friedman. Please leave your comments. This is Creative Commons. And um, very strange what he saw and what he described. As for his prophecies, yes, they were fulfilled and they are still being fulfilled. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.